Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being with us for our first virtual THPRD Town Hall. My name is Holly Thompson, and I'll be your moderator tonight. Before we begin, I'd like to invite Lulu Ballesteros to provide information for listeners on how to access our simultaneous Spanish interpretation. Lulu, please take it away. Hola a todos y bienvenidos. Gracias por asistir a la Asamblea Pública de THPRD, donde platicaremos sobre la programación que tendremos disponible para ustedes para el verano. Asimismo, podrán realizar preguntas y podrán tener la sección de preguntas y respuestas. El primer paso a seguir es ir a la parte que dice Q&A, QIA, seleccionar y encontrarán un pequeño link que los llevará al área de español. Esta área es el área de preguntas y respuestas. Den clic a ese link. De nuevo, es un link que se llama Q&A, QIA. Den clic y ahí encontrarán el link que dice Town Hall Español. Den clic y ahí los llevará al área de español. De nuevo, presione ese botón y ahí los esperamos. Gracias. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lulu. Okay, a few housekeeping items before we get started. We have one hour for tonight's town hall. We will have a welcome from our board president, followed by a short staff presentation on plans for summer programming. There are currently 146 people participating in this meeting right now. We've also received nearly 50 comments or questions ahead of time, so we will do our best to respond to topic areas in this meeting that we've received, and we'll be posting a summary of the questions and responses on our website, www.thprd.org, later this week. We'll also be posting this video on our YouTube channel. For the public, your microphones and cameras have been turned off. We hope you will use the chat feature to ask any questions or share comments, and we're already getting questions, which is wonderful. We can't wait to address those with you. To use the chat feature, select the conversation icon in the upper right hand corner. Type out your question and select send. Your question or comment will be sent to the moderator, that's me, and I'll be reading your questions. We have board members as well as staff here available to answer all of your questions. If you're having any technology challenges, please let us know in the chat and we will have staff assist you one on one. Now I'd like to introduce our THPRD board president, Felicita Monteblanco. Felicita? And Felicita, I think we need you to turn on your audio. So sorry, thank you, Holly. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So excited that there's 150 of, of y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, on behalf of my peers on the board, I wanna welcome and thank you for participating tonight. Um, all my fellow board members are here. I'd like to introduce them. We have Ashley hartmeyer Prig, Tia Ping, Heidi Edwards, and Wendy Kroger. Uh, as you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused some unimaginable challenges. We uh, have been heartbroken to have to close facilities, shut down playgrounds and sports courts and more to ensure public health. Uh, we genuinely cannot wait to welcome you back. We are as anxious as you are to make sure you can safely return to the activities you rely upon. Um, we've had some really positive news in this past week and we're, uh, I'm excited to share that with you. As more information has been released about the governor's reporting plans, we've learned we'll be able to open some of our activities sooner than we had even thought a week ago. Uh, so breaking news, we'll be opening tennis courts, dog parks, and skate parks for public unscheduled use this Saturday, May 23rd, in compliance with state rules. We will have to follow physical distancing and limits on group sizes, but this is a big step forward. Uh, tonight, you'll also hear about our plans for starting small and hosting a small number of summer camps in July. Based on the state rules and our staffing limitations, you can expect more of a prolonged rollout of programming. Uh, this will be a very different summer for all of us who love THPRD, but I'm proud that we're moving forward. Uh, you may be aware that other park providers have had to make the difficult choice of eliminating summer offerings. So even though our efforts will start small and will build our capacity as allowed, as allowed, um, please know how committed we are to serving your needs as quickly and as safely as we can. 
Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to our, to our Director of Parks and Recreation Services, Aisha Panis, who will give us a short presentation on summer programming. Thank you very much. Good evening, community members and members of the Park District Board. I'm Aisha Panis, the Director of Park and Recreation Services. Thank you for spending your time with us tonight. While the last few months have been largely focused on the pandemic response, those of us in Park and Recreation have been anxious to get back to the work we do best, connecting the community to a variety of recreation opportunities. We've created special teams to help strategize and develop new ways of engaging with the community, and we've developed some preliminary plans for summer based on current state and health authority guidance. We'd like to share this information with you and ask for your input tonight. We know that access to quality, affordable childcare so that parents can return to work will be a critical need in the coming weeks and months. Therefore, we're focusing our efforts on developing models for summer camps that allow us to scale up or down depending on demand and resources. With any programming we're able to provide as we move into phase one, then phase two, then phase three, we'll do it consistent with the guidance in place at the time. For now, we know that our ability to provide camps outside in parks will be more likely than inside facilities but we will adapt as conditions improve. Our staff are also strategizing how to reopen facilities consistent with the phasing guidance. We're revisiting our community events and looking at ways for people to gather safely. And we're also stretching into new areas by providing a virtual rec center where we can provide recreational content during this time when we're all staying at home a lot more of the time. With regard to our plans for summer, the provision for summer camps is a key priority for THPRD. We know that phase two of the reopening plan presents our best opportunity to provide camps, so we're working toward beginning our registration camps just after the 4th of July holiday. We are diligently reworking our longtime, very successful camp programs to be consistent with state guidance for youth camps, and we expect further refinement of this guidance in the coming weeks. Because public and sta staff safety is critical, this means our revamped camps will serve a lot fewer children. In previous years, we've been able to welcome over 13,000 campers during the course of the summer. This year, the initial camp offerings will be limited to about a quarter of that amount. However, we have set in place plans to scale up these offerings as demand solidifies and staff members are hired. We will maintain interest lists by camp location and camp types, and we'll grow our program offerings using this information. In our last focus group discussions over the last few weeks, we've heard a keen interest in half day camps over full day camps and a strong desire for campers to remain in small pods of 10 or fewer children. In terms of our various amenities, we don't believe we'll be able to open our pools until later in the reopening framework, but we'll be monitoring conditions closely. We are hopeful that sports courts and fields will open as long as we're able to assure safety protocols are met. We're doing the planning now to ensure that we have adequate equipment and supplies to ensure good hygiene and are evaluating state guidance on face coverings and protocols for activities like temperature checks. We've also been asked by the participants in our focus groups to incorporate certain mental health considerations in our staff training for summer camps. This is intended to best support campers who are re-entering a more social environment after several months at home. Our summer and fall programming teams are also assessing our facility readiness for providing recreation services as allowed by the state reopening plan. We know that we'll have to adjust class capacities. We expect that there will be limits on spectators and visitors for a time. And we also anticipate needing to educate our staff and patrons on best practices for ensuring distancing standards and cleaning protocols are met. Between now and the rollout of our summer camps and additional programming, our innovative programming team is working hard on adding content to our virtual rec center. Our goal with the rec virtual rec center is to provide that community gathering place for our patrons. Although they can't convene outside our gyms and dance classrooms or near our front desks, we want patrons to have a place to see familiar faces, find new ways to explore their neighborhoods safely and enrich their lives. The site includes an ever expanding list of program focus areas such as fitness and nature and for audiences ranging from preschool age children to active seniors. We're both providing links to partner sites such as Silver and Fit's live senior oriented fitness events, 
as well as developing THPRD specific content, such as what you'll see on the next slide. Here you can see we have a range of options for folks to enjoy, from backyard skill development to driveway tennis, yoga programs you can do in your living room, and brushing up on your photography skills. Work is also underway to develop dynamic class offerings with live instructors, as we've heard from many patrons that they miss interacting in this way, and we anticipate being able to launch this work later in the summer. Finally, we are confident that we are doing the necessary work to retool and reinvent the way THPRD serves its community. And we look forward to the day that we're able to welcome our patrons back to our recreation centers, our sports facilities, our splash pads, and our pools. Thank you for the opportunity to share our plans for the coming months. With that, I'll conclude my presentation. If community members watching at home have any questions, they can post them to the Q&A section accessible at the bottom of the screen but I understand that there are some initial questions our moderator, Holly, will pose to the board and staff at this time. Thank you. Great, thank you, Aisha. With that, we'd like to begin to respond to questions we receive from the public, as well as questions that have come in just now from the chat. That is what the bulk of this town hall is about. I'd like to recognize that we now have 190 attendees, which is fabulous. We're so appreciative of your interest and your, your um, enthusiasm for THPRD. And I want to start with our first question to one of our board members, Tia Ping. And it is a topic that we re received a lot of emails about, Tia. People really want to know, are pools going to be opening this summer? What's the status of pools? When can we hope to see pools opening? Oh, this is probably one of the most popular questions I think we've seen and I've gotten. I have three water baby kids, so I was hoping that the pools would be definitely open this summer, but it looks like um, from what we can tell from the governor's office that pools will likely come in phase three, it sounds like, of um, opening. And so in Washington County, we've heard phase one will start mid-June. And then um, I think I read that before it moves on to the next phase there has to be at least 21 days minimum plus other requirements so it's kind of looking like we probably won't be able to open pools we're gonna keep our fingers crossed that maybe we can even hopefully open an outdoor pool but unfortunately um, we want to make sure that everybody's kept safe there's not much data on pools and the virus transmission and stuff like that right now so um for now, we just follow um, what the governor's orders are, and it sounds like phase three, which may not be this summer. Thank you, Tia. I know that is tough news to have to deliver. I want to ask a follow up question uh, for our general manager regarding pools because we have had such strong interest and we know that there's going to be uh, quite of a bit of delay on pools. There has been talk about the difference between indoor and outdoor pools. Doug, can you give us a little bit of information of the status of our outdoor pools and you know what's the outside chance? Is there is there any hope of out opening an outdoor pool or is it probably not likely this summer? Thank you, Holly. Uh, I, I think the biggest key to remember uh, is following the state guidelines. Uh, the reminder that uh, we don't get to control a lot of those initial steps and we are reacting to uh, and trusting the guidance from the state. Uh, so as, as Tia had noted, indoors is looking uh, you know, more and more like it will be a fall um, possibility. Uh, again, since we don't control that lever, uh, if if pool you know if if things move along well then the outdoor concept you know I'm I'm guessing it'll be uh, mid to late summer and and as the case may be um, this particular summer we have a very large bond project going on at Somerset West so that pool is is not plausible to open this summer as as was originally planned uh, it's one of the last bond projects. Uh, but Raleigh uh, remains a possibility, but again, it's it's all based on guidance and, and the feasibility of what the guidance reads on what are the restrictions. Uh, we have to deal with all that. Thank you, Doug. Um, I want to send this next question to one of our board members, Heidi Edwards. Heidi, we received a lot of questions coming in um, online from patrons who love the STIR Center. We heard people talking about how they miss the gym, how they miss the classes, the activities, the Thursday night social dances. 
What are we hearing about the possibility of opening the STIR Center and the time frame of that given the governor's reopening plans? Can you share some insight with us, please? Yes, thank you, Holly. Well, this is another one where we wish we had better news. Um, the state guidelines clearly um, prioritize being very conservative for vulnerable populations, including our, our seniors. Um, community centers are identified as being able to open in phase two with limitations, but senior centers are clearly called out as not being included on that list due to the fact that they do serve very vulnerable um, health uh, populations uh, with respect to their health. Um, we don't know when Washington County will be moving through these phases, but we are anticipating um, being on what what we are seeing in the governor's reopening plans, that it will be some time before we can open Stir Center, unfortunately. Um, we do have programming in our virtual rec center and programming that is directed specifically at the 55 and better community to address their needs. Um, and we look forward to being open, being able to open our community centers or expanding our classes and our staff will be looking specifically at how we can keep our STIR Center um, patrons active and engaged until we are able to open the center again. So again, while we wish it was better news, we do want to be mindful of our most vulnerable populations, um, especially those that we serve within the STIR Center. Thank you so much, Heidi. I do want to look at um, ask a question that's come in from the chat from one of our participants and Aisha, our director of park and recreation services. I'd like to direct the question your way. Um, as the public knows, we've had a lot like everyone else, a lot of financial constraints uh, because of the pandemic virus and we've had to do some downsizing at the district and make some very, very painful cuts in terms of staffing. So this question was asked, will THPRD be hiring seasonal staff this summer? And if so, will we be able to uh, prioritize hiring back staff that were let go versus new hires? Aisha, can you help us with a response to this question? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Holly. So we sadly had to say farewell to um, hundreds of our part-time staff members, our very valued members of our staff. And that was at the end of March. Um, we committed to them at the time we would keep in touch. We would let them know as things changed. And we indicated to them that our interest was in developing some sort of expedited hiring process. We have developed that process and it's in play now. We are actually um, starting the process of bringing back some limited positions. Right now, that's primarily on the park maintenance side where we have a need. Grass continues to grow care continues to be needed at these sites and so we are working to bring back some of our returning staff and they have had the opportunity to apply through an expedited process so that is going to be handled as our needs grow and as they change but we are thrilled to be able to welcome back our very very valued community members and former employees again Thank you so much, Aisha. I'd like to send the next couple of questions your way. Um, lots of questions coming in the live chat that have to do with the two sites that we're gonna start with summer camps. Can you share with us the locations of where they're, they're going to be? And also a combination question of, since they will be outdoors, can you talk about what we'll be doing um, on the hot days and the rainy days? Because it's Oregon and it rains. We have been strategic about where we have chosen to hold those camps. So as I mentioned in my presentation, we are looking to only hold a fraction of what we've been able to hold in previous years. And that's largely because we are starting small. We are making sure that we dial in the um, new requirements that we need to comply with. And so we want to focus in on providing those camps and there will be a number of them at two different sites. One will be the Howard M. Turpening Recreation Complex and the other will be Mountain View Champions Park. 
those sites are chosen because of their size, because of the amenities that are there. There are restroom structures. There are covered areas that we can um, use for inclement weather days. So when it's very hot or when it might be raining or misting, we can access those spaces and keep our campers out of, out of the weather. So those are our initial places we intend to begin camps. And as I mentioned, we're hoping to scale and we will be creating these interest lists that are for those sites, but as well as some additional sites, um, we're trying to geographically spread those around the district so that we can provide um, more and better options for folks in our community. Thank you so much, Aisha. Um, I've also seen several questions in the chat about registration. I just wanted to announce we'll be sending out a press release tomorrow with a lot of this process updates but the initial uh, summer registration date will be for in-district registration Saturday, June 13th. So for the folks that have asked that question, Saturday, June 13th. The next question I'd like to send to Keith Hobson, our Director of Business and Facilities. Um, Keith, people are noticing a difference in our maintenance levels in the parks and some changes in kind of our approach to maintenance. I'm wondering if you could give us a little bit of an overview of how the pandemic has affected that and what we can expect to see in terms of service levels in our parks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Holly. I'd be happy to. Um, we take a lot of pride in maintaining at our parks at a high level and it's been difficult because we know, frankly, where our parks are is not at our normal service levels. Uh, Aisha touched on the staffing reductions and those have had an impact on the park maintenance staffing. In addition, we've had to reprioritize a lot of the work for our staff in the field to try and do things uh, that are, are direct COVID related, such as trying to secure the closed facilities and, uh, and have proper signage to tell people what's open and, and what's not. Um, spring is always a challenging time for us uh, with the warm wet weather, grass grows and we're, we're challenged to keep up with it. Uh, but our staff are in the field and, and doing their best effort to keep up with this. We are hoping this summer, as I should again mentioned, that we will be able to add back some part-time staffing into the park maintenance area. Uh, it will hopefully improve the service levels over where they're at right now, but I, I, I have to be candid that I don't think they will be at our normal service levels for the summer. We're going to be focusing on preventative maintenance and ensuring that there's no long-term harm to any of our facilities. But, but some of the immediate service levels um, may still be slightly below where we're used to having them. Thank you, Keith. This next question I'd like to direct to Sabrina Taylor-Schmidt, our Director of Recreation Services. Sabrina, we've received some questions both before the town hall and in the chat related to health and safety of campers planning for summer camping. So can you, for summer camp, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what we can expect in terms of health and safety measures, maybe new practices, protocols? And one specific question we got in the chat was, can you let us know why uh, masks won't be required? Great, thank you, Holly. Yeah, the governor's office and the Oregon Health Authority have provided really great framework for us to build our own best practices off of. Um, we will be keeping the camper pods to 10 and modifying activities to keep people safe. So how we use equipment in our camps and the games we play, the crafts we do will all, are all being modified right now, restructured and framed out. The recommendation on masks for young children is that they're not gonna be required. And that's because of the difficulty in keeping the mask on and the safety on that. But we will be committing to the pods. There will be, they will be able to wear them if they choose to wear them. Um, there's some activities that they're not recommended to wear, young kids to wear masks on, um, but any new staff. So for example, if a staff person needs to take a break, that staff person coming in will be wearing a face mask and pro proper procedures. We are going to increase our availability to hand sanitizer and the first parks we're picking to put the camps on all have running water to help increase our ability to keep kids safe. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I want to acknowledge that um, we've had some people join the chat and they've been asking, could we repeat what is opening this Saturday? We also had a question about how are we opening these things before phase one? So just to clarify quickly and repeat, we'll be opening this Saturday skate parks, dog parks and tennis courts. 
they, we will have to comply with physical distancing rules, so we will have to keep groups to smaller than 10 people within those spaces and we'll need the public's help with that. And the reason we're able to do that before we enter phase one is because the guidance coming from the governor's office was different than what we had expected. Um, and it was very clear that these amenities could be opened if if the providers could follow the com and comply with the regulations they were putting in place before phase one. So that's the explanation to that point. So for this next question, I'd like to go to one of our board members, Wendy Kroger. Um, Wendy, we've received a lot of commentary from the public. A lot of people are feeling this way. Uh, one gentleman emailed me and said, can't we just get back to it? Can't we open up everything now? Can't we make our own judgment calls on what we feel comfortable participating in? Why can't you open the whole district up? Wendy, can you help us uh, respond to this question, please? Sure, thank you. Um, and I want to thank staff very much for putting together this town hall. I think that uh, a lot of people are very happy to hear what's going on. It, it is a moving target. Things are changing quickly and we're trying very hard to respond. Um, you know, we understand it's a tough time for everybody. Um, you miss THPRD and your favorite activities. And I have to tell you, we miss you. And so we are so looking forward to being able to, to play and recreate with you again on our in our facilities just as absolutely as quickly as we can. Um, but the reality is that we're bound by the state law and state regulations. We have to follow those. And, and for those people who um, are, are fully capable of understanding that they're not sick and they don't understand why they can't do what they want, we understand, we, have, we feel for you. But our job is to try to watch out for and care for all of us. And we have to care for all of us the best way we can. And that is, in fact, at this point, following the state rules. Um, we, we're committed to opening things as quickly as we can, as you've heard. I think it's great news. Um, in many places, sadly, um, parks and recreation are not going to be open for the summer. We're working really hard to make ours open for all of us. Um, and we look forward to that and, and, you know, the skate parks and the dog parks and the tennis courts for unscheduled play. We, we ask for your help in helping us maintain the, uh, the distancing guidelines and the um, all of us would like to go play, but try to remember that 10 of us should probably not uh, exceed. It should not be 11 or 12. So try to keep it um, as best you can and help us with that. We'd also ask that when you have suggestions, we love hearing from you. So please do give us the suggestions and we'll try very hard as we build capacity to meet those um, requests that you make. But in the meantime, we're all in this together. We want to be out there as much as you do. And thanks for participating. Thank you so much, Wendy. This next question I want to give to our general manager, Doug Menke. Doug, we are getting a lot of questions in the chat wondering about what's going on with sports leagues. When can the kids get out there, hold practices, games, tournaments? What does the future look like? And I know this question has a lot of moving parts um, and different components, but it's coming in in a lot of ways. People want to know what's the status of fields, sports teams, and league play. What can you share with us? Well, again, the certainly the field sports uh, primarily because they do eventually end up a contact sport by definition. Uh, we we don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, you know, I would envision uh, the hope for a fall start uh, for those activities that are fall related. Uh, the realities are that it may start with a kind of a staged opening practices in, in a very controlled environment following proper protocol. Um, it's a difficult situation, uh, but we anticipate that, uh, you know, it, it will continue to free up, but for the short term now, uh, certainly uh, our plan is to work closely with BSD and the, the school district, our, our affiliated leagues, as we manage our way through this. Uh, you know, we're part of the show and, and the actual program delivery in many cases is with our affiliates, our nonprofits. So we, we do plan to work closely uh, with regard to league play. Thank you, Doug. And I know there's a follow up question with a little more specificity. Aisha Panis, I'm wondering if you can help us with this. It, it specifically talks about with the field request process. When do we see that opening up for recreational sports? 
So as Doug mentioned, we see this as a later phase. Phase two is more likely when we would have field use requests coming through again. And in terms of affiliate use, August is likely the soonest that that would occur. So we're we're going to be updating our affiliate users. We're going to be updating our website as conditions change for us, but it is a phase two activity. Great, thank you for that clarification, Aisha. I appreciate it. This next question I'd like to give to our board member, um, Ashley hartmeyer Prig. This was a really interesting question we received online. Uh, someone was asking about the advocacy work that THPRD is doing and sort of a recognition that government, local government agencies, special districts are having to ask for help and, and, and advocate for their needs right now. Can you give us a little bit of an overview of some of the advocacy work THPRD is doing right now? Yeah, thanks Holly. Um, just making sure you can all hear me now. Yeah, great. OK, great. Thank you. Um, check that off your bingo cards. Um, so as you may have been out enjoying our parks and our trails, um, you've probably seen a lot of people there. And so our parks and our trails are so important to us and our mental health and our physical health right now. I know they've been really a place of um, respite for me. So. Um, knowing how important it is for our community, um, all of your board members as well as staff at the district have been busy advocating for THPRD at the federal, the state, county, and city levels. Um, we've been um, working to get state and local special districts, including park districts like ours, in federal funding packages. Um, we have been um, in touch with both Senator Wyden and Senator Merkley, as well as Representative Bonamici. Um, Chair Montebanco and I have been on weekly calls with local elected officials from small districts like us to city to county to state to those federal level representatives. Um, and they all know how important THPRD is to us in our community. So I feel hopeful that as um, some of the upcoming um, federal relief and other packages are going on that we will be considered. Um, you know, it was really hard for us to have to lose so many of our amazing employees and teammates. So I'm um, hoping that we can start to make things whole again through that advocacy. Great, thank you so much, Ashley. Appreciate that. Um, the next question I've seen a lot of come in through the chat and also through email. Aisha, I'm hoping you can help us with this. Can you describe a little bit, we had the question about when will summer registration begin, but can you discuss a little bit about how that registration process will work? Can we do it in person? How will it be different this time? It'll largely be the same. We will hold our registration at the same time. We typically do 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning, so this will be June 13th, and we will offer phone in as well as online, and this time around one change will be that our Centro de Bienvenida will be expanded to serve as a welcoming center for any user that requires more of a personal touch. So we will hold the Centro event um, at the HMT complex and we'll provide some more information about that process, but we'll have staff on site to help um, help people through the registration process and answer any questions about the process. Um, we intend through this registration process because it's really focused on summer camps and we know we have a limited number of camps. We do intend to roll out options for registration for the whole summer, but that will just be that first initial list of options. What we are intending to do is to maintain pretty significant wait lists for each of these options. When we know that the there is demand for those camps, we will then work to create the camps and then to get folks registered for those camps. We're also, because we have additional sites that we hope to expand upon, should there be the interest, we will have interest lists for those locations as well as certain types of camps like sports oriented, nature oriented, or just general fun. And so with those interest lists, we'll expect to have a little bit more time needed to identify staff, bring them into place and, and create those camps. When we have lists of camps that people can register for, people on the interest list will be notified that at a certain time they will be available for registration and they'll have that opportunity to register online. And um, so that is how we're going to handle registration this time around. Wonderful, thank you so much. This next question I wanna to direct to our board president, Felista Monteblanco. 
Felicita, can you give us um, an insight into how we will be ensuring equity in our decision making right now? Yes, I uh, love this question. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the individual who asked this, um, though I know it certainly speaks to so many of the 190 people who are on the call right now. Um, so one, I wanna make sure that y'all know that the board is, is and always will be committed to equity that hasn't changed um, even though we are in the midst of a pandemic. You just heard Aisha talk about the Centro program, um, which is a big piece of our racial equity work. I also wanna highlight uh, the financial aid program. Whilst we are having difficult budget discussions, we are still very much committed to that program and ensuring that individuals and families have access to um, our programming and recreation. Um, three, uh, I want to highlight our virtual rec center, which has free content um, for you to you and your family to stay active. So please utilize that. It's great stuff. Um, and then, of course, please know that we are asking critical questions of staff of the district of ourselves, um, and we hope that you will do the same. If there's something you think we've missed, please, by all means, reach out to us. We want to hear from you. Keep us accountable. We this is, you know, racial equity is a journey and we're committed to to doing it. So just uh, stay in touch. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And to our participant in the chat who specifically asked if we anticipate any changes in availability to financial aid or any structural changes to the program, extrapolating on what Felicita shared, no, there will not be any changes. We're 100% committed to the program and we'll keep it going. So I do want to move to Sabrina, um, our recreation manager. I've seen several questions in the chat and email as well about the idea of moving outdoor exercise classes to the parks. Um, so Sabrina, can you tell us, is that something we're looking at in recreation? Is that on the horizon? Um, what might that look like in the future? This is definitely something we're looking at. What's exciting is we've already done this before. We've had great fun doing it with our fitness in the park and the walk with me programs. Uh, part of the guidance for gyms that are opening up is they encourage fitness classes outdoors. So this is definitely something as we move into phase one that we will be exploring and offering. Great. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Um, Aisha, I'd like to send this question your way. So it's kind of in the similar vein of moving exercise classes out into the parks. Can we expect to see more classes online through something like Zoom? Um, one of the people who emailed us shared that they've tried the online videos, but they really miss interacting with their instructors and they're wondering if we're gonna have more opportunities for a Zoom style class. Yes, it is on our horizon. We are looking at this. Um, we we have been launched into a whole new world uh, for THPRD in terms of virtual and um, recorded programming. It's it's not been where we've spent our time before. We've been about the personal. We've been about the in in the center type of activities. And so this is this is a new world for us. But we know that this is um, a need. It's an interest. And uh, we've heard from many of our patrons that they miss their favorite instructors. They want to interact with the um, instructors for their preschoolers programs. And so we we know that there's an interest in this. There is a skill set that we need to develop on our staff to be able to deliver some of that content. And we're we're investing that time right now. So it, it is absolutely a part of our next phase. And we are um, excited to bring that to the virtual rec center. OK, I should don't go too far. You're coming up next. Uh, had several questions in the chat asking about the status of tennis courts. People are definitely happy that we're opening tennis courts, but did receive some comments that not all those tennis courts are show ready right now. So can you can you talk to us a little bit about what we can expect uh, for the tennis courts and as a follow up when we might be think about seeing lessons resume? Sure. So we have a, um, a variety of tennis courts across the district, and it's not always clear which ones might be ours, the park districts, and which might be the school districts. So while we can open up our park district tennis courts, we do not have that same say on the school district property. 
So the school district will make all the decisions for their sites, such as Westview High School. Um, but for the school, for the sites that are on THPRD property, our interest is in making those available um, as the weather improves. We know the majority of our tennis players do go out to those um, park sites to play. It's the best place to be. Uh, so they they will be open as of this Saturday. Um, as you mentioned, the show ready is a bit of a thing. Um, spring is always a very difficult time. We have a lot of work to get everything ready in a very short period of time. And this time of year in this pandemic, we have fewer staff to take care of those sites. So while those sites will be open, um, they don't have the spring cleaning that they would traditionally have received, but we will be working to get all of those sites ready to go um, as soon as we're able. So they, they will be ready. In terms of lessons, um, we are following the guidance of the state as we reopen facilities. So while we do anticipate the ability to open those outdoor tennis courts, indoor tennis is a little ways off it's going to be on the same schedule with our other facilities and so it's it's phase two before we're able to open anything and when it's phase two much like with all the other indoor facilities there's going to be capacity limitations those capacity limitations are going to be easier to reach when we're just offering reservation play of tennis so we anticipate that will come first and that tennis lessons where you're putting more people onto those courts are going to come much later in the reopening process Aisha, thank you so much. Sabrina, Recreation Manager, I'd like to um, send some questions your way that we're getting from the chat. So folks are asking about for the sites that we're going to be holding summer camp, what will be the requirements in terms of public access? Will the public be able to be around or near the children that are participating in the summer camps? And then second question is, you know, Teach Purity is really, really well known for its inclusion program and making sure that everyone has access and ability to participate. Do we still have the ability to provide the inclusion program as part of a summer camp component? Thank you, Holly. Those are great questions. So our goal will be to keep these pods separate there the goal will be not to intermingle with other pods or other public the idea is we need to be able to keep them safe and also document and track how who and what they've been in contact with so we will discourage um, uh, any other outside conduct but things we've done before such as doing a show for parents on the skills that the kids have learned in the camp we will not be doing those types of activities that is actually specifically called out in the guidance from the state so we are going to be trying to keep those pods uh, together with minimizing contact with outsiders uh, the second part of that question is inclusion this is a really important mission of thprd our access for all we want to make sure that we can uh, safely include everybody in our programs we are working with the guidance of the state which through the education to make sure that inclusion is part of our equity program. So I, we will have plans in place for everybody to safely participate in programs. Great. One follow up question for you, Sabrina, and then I promise I'll give you a break. Um, parents are asking, how will summer camp look and feel different in terms of the direction for dropping off uh, children and what will the guidance be to parents in the parent ham handbook that we typically produce? Thank you. Um, right now we're building that parent handbook based off that guidance that I referred to earlier from the state of Oregon. And we are out there on our sites mapping out where the different drop off locations are going to be. So it is going to be very di different. If you have come to any of our centers or programs before where you roll in and you come in and there's a central place where you bring your child and you drop them all off, that is not how this summer is going to look like. We're going to have designated pickup spots within the parks like if you're come in through one street or another. Um, we may even have some drop off from the car situations in some of our parks that have limited parking to make sure we're getting the kids to the direct spots. So um, it will look different. There will be a lot of information and communication so you feel safe, the parents feel safe, and they know where to go and what to do is going to be really important. Um, so that information will come out and hopefully be available before registration so you know what you're looking at. 
Wonderful, thank you, Sabrina. I'm going to send the next question uh, to Keith Hobson, our Director of Business and uh, Facilities. But I, before we go there, I've, we've received in the chat several questions and online as well, asking about play equipment. Are playgrounds still closed? When will play equipment open up? And I just want to clarify for our listeners, the play equipment is closed. Our parks are open, but the play equipment is not an amenity that's going to be opening anytime soon. So the playgrounds will stay closed and that is to make sure that we're in compliance with state of Oregon rules right now, which specifically call out playgrounds to continue to be closed. Mr. Hobson, we got a question um, from the chat. The question is, what is the district's long-term strategy to stay financially afloat and ensure that THPRD comes out of this drastic financial disaster in a stable position for the future? So that's a that's a heavy burden of a question, but I know that THPRD has been known for being incredibly fiscally conservative, doing a great job ma managing finances. Um, what can you tell us about how we're positioned for the future? Yeah, th it, it's a great question and it really, speaks to a lot of the difficult decisions we've had to make. Uh, for instance, closing facilities, um, although we were mandated to do that, but with some of the staffing reductions we've had to do, uh, we're very closely monitoring our known revenue impacts from the closed centers and the loss of program revenue, as well as uh, potential revenue impacts. We don't know what's going to happen for the rest of this fiscal year. But the key word that we keep using is financial flexibility. Uh, by saving costs now, we leave ourselves in a better position to be able to address the unknown. And we are continually matching up our uh, ability to, to meet our needs and to spend money with the resources that we have given the, the, the changes that are going on. So that's an ongoing discussion. It's an update that we continually have with our board and will continue to have until we get back to more of a normal footing. Wonderful, thank, thank you, Keith. And Keith, while I have you there, I'd like to send the next question your way as well. Lots of questions in the chat about particular center locations that people love. Will Garden Home open up for boxing? Will Cedar Hills open up for particular programs? So I know things are in flux, and I know that some of the guidance you know, we've talked about has changed even over the last week of what we expected. But generally speaking, what can you let us know about the timing of the opening of our community centers, absent the STIR Center, which we know will be on an even longer time frame? What, what does that look like from what we're seeing from the governor's office? Um, we know what we know at this point and that the difficulty is planning for what we don't know. Um, uh, we know at this point, or we've just recently heard uh, as of today, the county expects to move into phase one uh, June 1st, uh, which the good news is that I think that's a little earlier than we might have originally expected. And this has been touched on already as well, that we really don't see uh, activity occurring in our centers till we move into phase two. Uh, we know within the state guidelines and the governor's framework, the earliest we could move from phase one to phase two is three weeks, but we've heard that that, that is highly unlikely and that, that moving from phase one to phase two is probably more likely months for that to happen. So what that means is we're probably looking uh, late summer to start reopening our facilities. But again, that's when we can when we're allowed to reopen them. What we have to do at that point as well is ensure that we can meet all of the requirements to reopen them, which include cleaning requirements, uh, distancing requirements, possible facility modifications and capacity restrictions and then ensure that we've got an adequate um, uh, activity level to justify the cost of reopening the centers, which kind of goes back to the last question as well. So we're looking at all of that, and fortunately we're looking out into the future two, two months and being able to plan ahead, uh, but, but we'll know more as we have an indication when we're able to move from phase one to two. That's great. Thank you so much, Keith. For our listeners in the town hall, I wanted to highlight that we've posted some links in the chat um, those links are to the state of Oregon website, their coronavirus website that has all of the information coming from the state of Oregon, and then a couple of specific links 
to their guidance documents that um, relate to park and recreation services. So there's a link for outdoor recreation and a link for summer camps. These documents were uh, made available just on Friday. So just, just a few short days ago, although they all blend together right now, um, and that's what we're looking to for guidance in these areas. So with that, I know we got a question in the chat related to volunteerism. Aisha Panis, our Director of Park and Recreation Services, can I direct that question related to volunteerism your way, please? Sure, so the question was, what do THPRD coordinated volunteer opportunities look like as we open? Do opportunities correspond to a particular opening phase? Um, back in mid-March when we first started feeling the impacts of COVID-19, we made some calls about what types of volunteer activities we would promote within the district. And so we really moved away from uh, large work parties, restoration projects, and really focused more on um, the solitary types of volunteer opportunities. So counting egg masses and um, acting as a park steward. And so those activities have continued on during the district closure. Um, we are always looking for more people to take on that role as a park steward. And so if you're interested in doing that, you can uh, go to our volunteer opportunities page to get more information. But until larger groups are authorized, until um, we start moving into the reopening phases more, uh, we probably will not be expanding those volunteer opportunities beyond the ones that are really done more in uh, a small pair or a single person. Wonderful. Aisha, don't go away. Next question uh, from the chat that I want to send your way is, could you clarify for us what the capacity level is for summer camp at the two locations that we're going to begin with? Yes, so uh, we plan to have 31 camps. Each camp serves 10 campers, and that's between the two sites. So it is a drastic departure from what we traditionally offer at a variety of campsites around the district. Um, so that's 310 spots per week for the eight weeks of summer that we're anticipating. As I mentioned though, as registration pursue, proceeds, we will be uh, using our wait list to then build new camp offerings in those same locations. Once we know what the demand is, we can work to, to meet that. It requires bringing on a lot of staff to manage these small groups of campers. And so we are going to proceed that way. And um, so it is a smaller number, but we absolutely anticipate the scaling up and the ability to offer more and um, diverse sites as well. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, Keith Hobson, this question's coming your way. Uh, we've received a question asking about the deep cleaning of facilities. Will the facilities be ready for the public and what can uh, you tell us about the deep cleaning? And then will there be any changes to how we navigate those facilities? You know, we know going to the grocery store looks and feels different right now. How's it gonna feel different potentially coming back into a THPRD building? Well, as far as the deep cleaning on the facilities, uh, this is something that, that we really work towards before we close the facilities. And deep cleaning really means thorough sanitization. It's cleaning all the surfaces, especially common touch points like door handles, uh, light switches, and, and really removing any possibility of exposure through those common touch points. Uh, with our facilities that are closed, it also meant we're really tracking uh, what I would call clean zones. Uh, that are rooms that are done and we've, we're closing up and, and tracking them that if anybody goes into that, then we re-sanitize it before it's used. For facilities that are open, it's really now more about our frequency of cleaning and that's what I would expect it to be as the community centers and recreation centers reopen. Um, our frequency of cleaning will increase as well as the, the extent of it and the, the increased sanitization. I think going into facilities, uh, and, and I touched on this a little bit with the last answer, um, it will look different. Uh, capacities will be lower. The amount of entry points will be fewer in some cases. Um, and we will be um, ensuring um, uh, distancing and, and, and creating guides for people to ensure, like very much like grocery stores, you see um, indicators on the floors for safe distancing as people line up to check in. Um, so that I think is what we will be looking towards as facilities reopen. Wonderful. Uh, Keith, don't go too far. We have a question from the um, our participants that are participating and listening in Spanish. 
And the question came in about enforcement of the new park rules that are going into effect. What will enforcement look like um, uh, as, as we change the temporary park rules? Yeah, and this, to some degree, this will be a continuation of what we've been working with with the closures. Um, our, our hope is uh, with the ability, with the facilities that, or the amenities that we're going to be able to reopen the skate parks and, and the tennis court specifically, um, that will improve the, the need for enforcement because that's been a lot of our activity that, that people want to use those facilities and we've had to, to not allow it previously. Um, we, we have a park patrol uh, and, and we have a security office and, and people who observe problems can call that and use it. We're also trying to take a, a more positive approach with our what we're calling our ambassadors program. And these are uh, staff and we're looking for volunteers as well who are, are, are uh, able to be in the parks and be effectively greeters and help people understand what's open, what's closed, why certain amenities may be closed and, and do this more from a positive standpoint. And that so far has been very effective and, and very well received. Okay, Keith, and one final clarification question. We've got a couple of questions asking about the splash pads. Are the splash pads going to be treated like the pools and are they closed at this time? My understanding is splash pads are going to continue to be closed at this time. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, splash pads are like pools um, and will remain closed for, okay. the, for this phase. Okay, wonderful. So we have about five minutes remaining in the town hall. Um, we still have some questions we didn't get to. Please know if you weren't here at the beginning of it, we staff will be taking all of the questions that we've received both by email and through the chat, and we will be posting responses on our website. So we really do appreciate your time and your interest, and we want to make sure that we address the questions that you are asking. Aisha, I'd like to turn it your way. I know there was a question um, related to aquatics you wanted to address. And can I send it your way to, to share the question and share your response? Sure, there was a question in the chat about what we were doing to accommodate the needs of our uh, competitive aquatic programs. Um, so we have a variety of users that are at our uh, Tualatin Hills Aquatic Center and um, the the fact of the matter is that all types of aquatic activities are currently prohibited. So um, we will be taking into account all of the different users of our sites, but we are beholden to what the state and the health authority tells us we can do. And so um, we will we will know more and share more as conditions change. They've changed very quickly through this whole process, um, but but they are in the same situation as all other aquatic users. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Aisha. Appreciate it. Keith Hobson, I'd like to send you a couple of final questions uh, really quickly. The, a couple of them are a combination. Lots of questions coming in. Is it possible to open a part of a community center? Like, can we just open the weight room if weight rooms are allowed to be open? And why are we keeping the entire center closed uh, if we could open portions? I know it's a really complicated question and um, there's a lot of mechanics to that. Can you help us understand? Uh, yeah. Um some of it is uh, financial in the sense that um, um, staffing and uh, operating and maintaining, including the, the utilities costs of a center, are, are, are not inexpensive. And so we want to make sure that to reopen a center, we have adequate activity there to help support the cost of reopening that center. Uh, it may mean at times that we're, we can consolidate a smaller level of activity in fewer centers and allow us to reopen those centers. And then as it scales up, and that's a consistent theme, as it scales up, then we can open more centers. Um, we, we've lost a lot of staff and it will take time to uh, re, to, re, um, to staff back up to have uh, all the staff we need to run a center and to, um, to run the classes we have at those centers as well. Um, so we we will look at this and continue to assess it, um, but but it, it it probably is going to have to uh, stagger um, stay have staggered reopening and scale up. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate it. 
OK, final question is going to go to Sabrina Taylor Schmidt, our recreation manager, um, and I apologize for the folks that have been asking this. There's many in the chat wondering about the Thrive program registration for the fall. If we plan to be able to offer after school care uh, come the fall. Sabrina, can you give us a little bit of an insight there? Yes, I'm happy to. Uh, Thrive is such an important part of our programs. We're glad to pr provide the after school, which is critical for so many parents, including myself, uh, child care. Uh, we're working closely with Beaverton School District to see what the school year is going to look like next year as part of our plan. So those that are in the Thrive, Thrive program will be receiving a letter that's coming out this week about the next steps for the program. We are delaying registration. Typically registration for the next school year happens in June and we are going to push that out to we think July, so that way we'd have more information on this inform from the school district because we need to know how they might be rearranging the school year, as well as which facilities we've been able to bring back online. Thank you, Sabrina. OK, we have come to the end of our town hall and the time that we have this evening. I did see several questions in the chat asking if we've recorded it. We absolutely have. We will be posting it this week to our YouTube channel so you can watch this in its entirety. And we will also be, as I said earlier, taking all of the questions we receive from email and we've received through the chat and doing our best to summarize them and post responses. So if we didn't get to your question, I really do apologize, but it will uh, we will do our best to respond to you in a written format on our website. Also be patient, we'll be updating our website. I did see some questions in there about our parks going to open soon. Remember at this point, parks and trails are absolutely open. We need to follow physical distancing requirements, but parks and trails are there for your use. Please enjoy them. And this Saturday, we will be able to open some additional amenities, our dog parks, our skate parks, and our tennis courts. So we will be updating our website with that information. I'd like to turn it over to our board president, Felicia de Monteblanco, to, uh, to have a final thank you on behalf of THPRD. And with that, I will say good night. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone so, so much for joining us. We are, we feel so fortunate. Last number I heard was 190. Um, we, like Wendy touched upon, we miss you as much as you miss us. Um, so stay tuned, we're hard at work for you. Um, and we look forward to seeing you th soon. And a huge thank you to staff um, who made all this possible. Thank you, thank you. Have a good night. All right, thank you.